we go. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Well, hi everyone. Um, to introduce ourselves, first of all, so I'm Octavia Holland. I'm the Assistant Director of the Early Childhood Unit at NCB. This is over to Angela. Uh, so my name is Angela Russell and I work with Octavia in the Early Childhood Unit at the uh, National Children's Bureau as well. Yeah, so thank you so much for coming along to this session. What would be really great, if it's OK with everyone, is if we could just do some super quick introductions. Um, if you could just tell us who you are and also if you happen to know anything about the intervention making it real, then could you just mention it just because it will help us to make sure that we gauge our presentation um, in the right way. So I'll just kind of work work through my screen. If you want to turn your camera on, that would be lovely, but completely understand if you don't, that's not a problem. Um, so Chris, do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, for my sins. <laughs> I'm the Sunday Arts Manager for Bath and North East Somerset, so the Special Educational Needs Disability Information Advice and Support Service. And I know nothing about your programme, hence the reason I'm here. That's absolutely fine. That's kind of what we're expecting, but I just want to double check. Um, and Julie. Hi, I'm Julie Killer. Um, I'm a head of service at Wakefield Local Authority and I'm also the Yorkshire Humber Regional Lead. Um, I know a little bit about your programme. Okay, okay lovely. Thank you very much. Don't know why I'm echoing, that's irritating. Um, Asta. Asta, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, lovely. Oh, I'm not sure if we can hear you now, actually. OK, not to worry. Maybe if you're not able to speak, perhaps just put into the chat if you can um, where you're from and what your role is. That would be great. OK, so we'll move on to Kate, Kate Bradley. Hi all, I'm Kate Bradley. I'm Strategic Development and Improvement Manager for SEND for Oxfordshire County Council and I don't know anything about your programme, which is why I'm here too. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Lovely to meet you. Um, and Charlotte, you've already said hello, so thank you for doing that. Um, so now we will go on to, it's either Sarah or Sarah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 I'm a designated medical officer from Gloucestershire and I know nothing about your programme, so here to learn. <laughs> Great. OK. Um, Louise. Hi, everybody. I'm a DCO in Wigan. Um, and again, I don't know anything about your programme. OK, thank you. And Claire. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Claire McEwen. I'm a Children's Commissioning Manager for Mental Health at Oldham CCJ. I don't know anything about your pro program neither. Oh right, okay. Well, that's interesting because um, Oldham is one of our kind of flagship areas, so you'll be finding out about some stuff that's I would going say, on locally. Yeah, so. quite, quite relatively new to the post. So no, no, no. Me. Sorry, I didn't mean it like that. It <laughs> just meant hopefully it'll be even more interesting because we talk a little bit about um, yeah. Oldham and our little video clips actually from Oldham. Um, okay, brilliant. Thanks, Claire. So, um, Saskia. Hi, I would turn my camera on, but unfortunately it's not working. Um, the joy is working from the attic. Uh, I'm a SEND implementation programme manager for Blackburn with Darwin Council. Lovely. And again, okay. I know nothing about this programme and that's why I'm here. Thank you. OK, and Elizabeth? Hi, I'm Liz Shepherd. I'm the SEND commissioning officer at Warrington Borough Council. And I also know absolutely nothing about your programme. <laughs> <laughs> this has become a bit of a competition, hasn't it? It's like I've never even heard of it. Anything to do. <laughs> um, OK, uh, Susan. Have we got Susan? Hello. Sorry, Lovely. everyone. It took ages. Okay. I'm Susan Huck. I'm Ops Manager for a Transitions Team in Adult Social Care in Warwickshire. And I don't know anything about your programme either. 
Okay, lovely. Well, it's really, really great to meet you all. I'm going to whiz straight into the presentation because we've got quite a lot to get through. Uh, so I'm just going to share my slides. Just bear with me a moment. Has that worked? I don't think it has. Has it? Just hold on one second. Right, here we go. Okay. Can you see that okay? Yeah, we can see your slide. Fantastic. Okay, thank you. Right, so we've done our introductions. Um, so making it real. So what we delivered specifically for children with SEND in the Northwest during February and March, which is the project we're going to focus on today, is all based on an intervention that we've been delivering since 2012 called Making It Real, Raising Early Achievement in Literacy. It's built on original research from the Uni of Sheffield. Um, Kathy Nut Brown, Professor Kathy Nut Brown, who I'm sure lots of you have heard of, um, is the kind of researcher, the academic behind the program. And I heard her speak last night actually at an event we were running, and it was really fantastic. Um, so her research goes back to the 80s and the 90s, and it's all about how children acquire literacy between the ages of 0 to 5. And the programme, the intervention, Making It Real, is based on that learning. It's a home visiting programme in the way that it's originally conceived. So when it was first tested out, it was teachers, reception age teachers, doing a series of home visits to the family home to support parents to think about how can they encourage their child's early literacy? How can they support their child making best use of what's around them, not having to spend money on um, fancy materials or resources, but you know, using everyday things. And we'll talk more about that as we go through, um, but it's an evidence-based programme. The Early Intervention Foundation and the what work rates the original randomised control trial as the highest level of evidence that um, an intervention can get that it assesses and it's shown in Oldham for example really really strong impact on children's early literacy um, at the end of reception it was measured there but we've you know we've done a whole range of independent evaluations that have shown a really clear impact on children's outcomes so the principles of the programme, there's the four strands of literacy. So we have books, oral language, early writing and environmental print. And Angela will talk about all of those a bit more and they'll um, also be demonstrated in the clip I'm going to show in a moment. But you can see there we've got some lovely pictures demonstrating um, children kind of enjoying those different strands of literacy. And the other set of principles that underpins making it real is called the Orin framework. So this is a framework that was developed by um, Kathy Nut Brown, and it's based on so opportunities, recognition, interaction, and modelling. And you can see there in the photo on the bottom left hand side, you know, it's these kind of everyday opportunities. You're out in the woods, and you know, maybe you talk about the names for different things that you're seeing and you can kind of build up a child's language. So it's looking for opportunities everywhere and it's recognising what children are doing. It's taking the chance to interact with them and it's modelling early literacy and it's modelling how you can go about doing things like mark making and um, early kind of early writing skills, all of those kind of things. So these principles, however it's been delivered, and it has kind of varied and been adapted over the years. So, for example, in Oldham, um, it's been delivered through health visitors, which is a really interesting approach. In other areas, it's been delivered in groups. Angela's done some amazing work in Lambeth with groups of parents in um, a programme that we call Sharing Real. So there are different ways that it can be delivered, but these principles of the early literacy strands and the Orin framework always underpin everything that we do in relation to making it real. So I'm going to whiz on. So this, um, just bear with me and I'm going to switch screens. Um, 
This lovely video is actually based in Oldham. I'm going to just show the first five minutes. I'd love to show the whole 15, but we haven't got time. Um, and it's in 2017, and it shows a little boy who's benefiting from the intervention. So I'm going to play that now. We've not got any sound again, Octavia. I can't hear it. Right, OK. Could anyone else hear that while it was going on? No, do you want me to give it a go on my computer, Octavia, and see? Could you? Yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely no problem. Take this. Technology, the joys. And if you do manage to play it, Charlotte, it goes up to minute five, please. OK, let me know if you can hear this. Hello. Yeah, brilliant. Well done. So how did you feel about our first visits, you know, when we initially went in? Uh, I actually remember our first visit quite well. And um, I remember saying to you that. Charlotte, sorry, do you want to put it on full screen? Yeah, of course. There we go. First visits, you know, when we initially went in. Uh, I actually remember our first visit quite well, and um, I remember saying to you that I don't feel as bad, as nervous as what I, th I first thought I would, because I knew most of the parents anyway, yeah. because I go to the houses regarding other things. Let's so, yeah. that's right. Good we looked job. at them on signs, didn't we? And you wrote some letters as well. Is that your name there? Yeah. Can you point to where your name starts? Because it was all new to me. I yeah. mean, I knew the parents and I knew the children and everything, so which was a good thing. But I think I was just a little bit nervous. Mm. I thought it's the normal literacy and numeracy activities that we do in school, but the setting's going to be different. It's Instead just of home, us doing it, it, yeah, in school with the practitioners, we're going to the families' houses and doing it in their setting alongside the parents. So it was so, quite, it was easier for you. Yeah. As, as I said, I just felt a little bit because it was just new. Yeah. But I mean, I think once they got into once you it, got the first it was session fine. done, it was fine. No, it was fine. Yeah. It was really, it was fun, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. In the supermarket. Yeah, in the And where were you there, look, man? It's yeah. nice to see the parents in their own comfort zone and just. Um, do you think they, they got a lot out of it? Yeah, definitely. I think sometimes they can feel a bit inferior when they come to school and thinking, what do teachers expect of us? But when, they, when, when we're in their own home, uh, they were fine, relaxed, down to earth, on the floor with the children, just getting yeah, on with it. Yeah, talking to them, yeah. In mother tongue, if they didn't feel confident. I don't think any of the parents, in all, in all honesty, um, decided that they weren't going to participate yeah there was there was nobody no. that i remember that sat all. back and looked everybody in, in, in got oh, involved. totally engaged yeah. and when those workbooks that we had that were collecting environmental print that mm. really helped to refocus everything i know that when we were talking we went into one or two parents well one particular parent's home sometimes it wasn't a bit focused yeah and then we pulled it back together didn't yeah. we the scrapbooks were ongoing uh, from week to week and th there was progress made so in they the know that what, what was expected yeah that was nice to see and i think the but yeah. you know the boxes that we had i think they were really useful because mm. they, we could put all the stuff in there and it wasn't all over and it was nice when we went back to luckman's that he had all his resources he had his box and he was making good use of all what we'd left yeah in that i know first so that visit. was brilliant that and uh, oh, the way that, that he's engaged nice. with his brother and his sister and he's used all his um, environmental mm. print is, is put that to good use mm. with the backing of mum, <coughs> brother and sister and dad. Yeah. And then also cut cut out <coughs> using the cereal packets for yeah. you know for other resources and stuff. And the like feedback that, but, that I got from Yasmin, um, as her, her from a perspective, a parent's perspective, was lovely. To good. see what she had to say about herself and what she had to say about Luckman and his confidence and his. She seems speech. more confident as well. Yeah, that was nice. She seemed more confident about what she was doing about, mm. you know, it wasn't too onerous and it wasn't too complicated. Yeah. It was quite, it was just at the right sort of level. Yeah. Look 
Look when Did she make want. a mess of it? Yeah, go ooh. Ooh, ooh, come on then. Right, look when your turn. You do it, You've got to then. do one then. Ooh. That sounds brilliant. Yeah. We'll, we'll get mum in a minute, shall we? Ready? It's a new project. We had some families already set in our mind thinking, oh, this would be beneficial for this family. We had lots of children and parents in, in our, our mind. mind yeah. And I think that first initial coffee morning that we did, it was very informal. It was actually in this staff room where we had the, you know, we had refreshments, teas and coffees, and then we had all the resources displayed and they came in and it was just lovely because yeah. it was more of a chat then. And you we know. just and we talked about all the different resources and stuff and, and the story sacks that we took today, that was just one of them. There's quite a number of them and we showed them the boxes, everything that we were going to use. So mm. if they were a little bit worried they could ask questions. And we basically asked them, didn't they, what do you want out of yeah. this? Because we're coming to your home. If we've not got it right, we want to know initially what we need what, to what, be bringing. What do you want or? to come out of yeah. this? And I think it was nice that they said, they could, you know, that I, I got down in mother tongue with them and they didn't feel that they had to speak and do the activities in English, especially if they, were, they didn't have that, uh, the English language, they were fine in doing the activities in mother tongue. So that was quite relaxing for them. We got to know the siblings as well, didn't mm. we? And, and family situations and things like that. Yeah. So it could highlight a number of things that were going was going yeah. on and you do have a you know more of a, a bond with those parents and children once you see them on a weekly basis and you start working with them and then when the youngest i mean particular i can say a particular family has got a really young child mm. and she came to play instead didn't she? yeah. and she was so happy to stay yeah. and she doesn't want to go home she's only how she's coming About up to two, two. And this particular family that Anna's talking about, mum and dad, are both new arrivals from Pakistan, so they both can't read English, they can't speak English. And it was just the joy and excitement from seeing the parents working with the children. Yeah, it was about, brilliant, oh, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, all can be done in Punjabi, um, you know, getting getting on their level. and just We were like part of the family the then. We were, yeah, and just watching the parents engage with the children and getting so much out of it. Was so lovely. we're making us food. Yeah. <laughs> what time yeah. are you coming? I've just stopped sharing Octavia if you want to. That's perfect. Thank you so much. So I think that really brings it all to life. And um, another point actually that was made by Kathy Nut Brown last night was how when practitioners are in the home, it's much easier for them to think about how to adapt the support that they give to meet the needs of the family. You can make a much better assessment of that when you can see someone's kind of living arrangements and their environment and so on. Right, I'm just gonna pop back over to my slides. Okay. So, going back to where I was. So, I'm just briefly going to talk about um, children with SEND during the pandemic, which I'm imagining is a topic that all of you um, are quite expert in. So, hopefully, this all um, resonates with people. So, COVID crisis has obviously shone a light on the differences in parental resources and capacity to support learning at home. And there's huge concern about the extent to which it's exacerbated inequalities in school readiness. Um, and I'm sure that's something that you're already focused on within your own areas. The Disabled Children's Partnerships reported that 75% of families have had delays to routine health appointments and 72% um, of families have reported that their EHCP or SEM plan was negative, negatively affected during the pandemic and again I'm sure that um, these are all facts that you know only too well. So in terms of the evidence base around the home learning environment, um, you know it's really really profound the link that has been found in research between the home learning environment in those early years and how those children then go on to do not just in terms of their academic achievements and reaching their potential but also their mental health their well-being um, their behavior all of those kind of different things their relationships so it's really really crucial that support is provided in those early stages where families and children will particularly benefit from it 
Are parents aware? Well, unfortunately, um, a lot of parents for, you know, really kind of straightforward reasons, not having had the information, not having had the support, perhaps not having um, had those experiences when they were very young themselves, don't, don't understand the importance of children having that support in the early years and what a difference that is going to make um, into the future. And I think we all know only too well that there's a kind of um, underestimation of the importance of the early years in the public at large and perhaps even um, you know within some policy making environments. So to move on then to our programme so it was a brilliant programme and we really really enjoyed it and it had such a positive impact so the Department for Education funded it focused across the northwest we worked in particular depth with Manchester local authority we only had seven weeks to deliver so it was it was pretty intense um, but the partnership made sure that it was all delivered um, and that we had a real really positive impact so what did we do we created 500 special treasure chests we ran five parent workshops four practitioner workshops and one training session with the special and the feedback across the piece was really really powerful and now we're actually delivering it in a further three local authorities so we're hoping to kind of get it out far and wide across the country over the next few years so I'm going to hand over to Angela now to take us through what you did within the areas okay so what did we do so <clears throat> initially we wanted to create um, some treasure chests bags we wanted to, the excitement of the treasure chest sounds exciting but actually the reality of it is it was actually a, a cotton drawstring bag um but we wanted to offer exciting bags with contents that would relate to the four strands of literacy so really to highlight what parents can do with their children from a very early age we wanted to the four strands um as you saw earlier is oral language so that's things to talk and sing about so as soon as babies are verbal that's all of their oral language books and things to read early writing and mark making again it's the very beginnings of the mark making when they can make marks um, in their food so it's the beginnings of mark making environmental print signs and things we notice when we're out and about next slide So we wanted these bags to really spark curiosity. So we wanted them to be excited to receive them. And the focus of these bags was low cost, no cost. So parents can continue the learning once the contents had been used up. We wanted the activities to be everyday things that parents could do with their children. So it, that didn't have an end result. So it, there was no script of how the contents was to be used. We just wanted it to be able to be open ended. Um, and we wanted to provide follow on activities that parents can do as part of their daily routine next slide uh, so these are the idea these are the things that we put in about in the bag so this is our treasure chest which was very exciting we had a paintbrush some of these chalk eggs so that you could really get a grip on those and a nice packet of cornflower to have some really sensory activity so if you go onto the activity sheet please so these are the activity sheets that went in with the bat with the uh, contents we wanted the um, activity sheets to have minimal writing so that low literacy families or families who had um, English as a second language could still see what they would do with the contents without having to read so much. Um, the next one was environmental print. So we put in a big book and um, lots of things to do with environmental print. Next slide. And this is the activity sheet that went with it. So it's just some really things to highlight that environmental print is all around and how children, the importance of recognising those logos and that's the beginning of early writing and familiarity. Next slide, we also put in there the next strand, which was oral language, things to sing and talk about. So we had a, a spiky ball that would light up, some bubbles, a shaky egg, some really nice glasses that the children can colour in. And we put in a card, hard card mirror, because you know what children don't like looking at themselves. And we also put these wooden spoons in that parents could make puppets out of. And the activity sheet was really focused on all the senses. So what can they see, hear, smell, touch and taste? Um, and additional items of how to make sock puppets, how to really bring storytelling and oral language to life, as well as some story rhymes. 
Um, next slide. And then the final strand was um, books. So that's not my bus, which is a hardback book. We also gave in additional resources. So if you look at the activity sheet, um, how to make homemade books, really to personalise them, because we know that if things are really relevant to children, that really sparks their curiosity. So there was lots of ideas of how to make homemade books and really personalise them. The next thing we did, if you move on to the next slide. So this was organised by an, um, an organisation called Point, who done such an amazing job of creating these 500 bags and distributing to the family. So it was a mammoth task, but we did it very successfully. So that was really amazing. Um, so there's a, this is a video of a little boy that received his bag. So he's got speech and language delay. So this is his, a video of him. And as hopefully you'll be able to make it play. Have we got sound? Can you hear it? No. Um, so, I mean, I can no, talk to you. I will keep going. I mean, it was just it's just a very nice video of him. He's got his book and his mum's talking about and it's a very interactive, touchy feely book. Uh, so if we go to the next slide. Um, OK, so that was the activity bags. And what did we do to accompany the bags? So we had these one hour workshops for family to attend and they were not they were really informal workshops where parents could come together um, and in those workshops we focused on the four strands of literacy we spoke about seven things that they could do to stretch their child's mind which I'm going to talk about in a minute we spoke about learning in everyday life and we really wanted parents to focus in, in tuning in with their child and ways of supporting a child with special need or a disability and at the beginning of the workshop you know lots of parents were talking about about what their children couldn't do and where they was they where they wanted them to be um but by the end the focus was actually where they was at and that was really nice to, to to focus on um the progression of their children um so we had lots of group discussions we spoke about the four strands of literacy parents thought about lots of items that they could fit into the four strands of literacy and parents realized literacy isn't just about books and writing it's there's so much more to early literacy at the, from the very beginning um so if you go to the next slide please here are some items um and i'm not going to ask you to say anything out loud but just thinking about those four strands of literacy that we spoke about just having to think where you would place these items and actually the sock puppets could be both oral and books because it you know bringing books to life with puppets is, is just as interesting and engaging as having a book itself bubbles again is something to sing about talk about but it's also getting those oral muscle movements in order to make those sounds when you're blowing bubbles crazy soap was a great resource that's nice and century where children can get lost and that's early mark making and it's all about building up these muscles that enable them to mark make later and then the free resources that we get through the through the letterbox that are all around us um, and that's what we were talking about there so we confirm the important role of the parent from the research so again we wanted to highlight it's what parents do and the characteristics of the home light home learning environment environment that are more important rather than who they are um, and their their financial status and so on and so forth and we we really wanted to highlight children with strong early learning home learning environments are ahead in both social and cognitive development by the age of three so if you go to the next slide please there we go so here are the seven ways to stretch your child's mind and this goes back to all the research that um Kathy Nut Brown talks about and these are the things that you can really do from a very very early age um, and I know Covid might have had a slight impact on that but the importance of doing these things from a very very beginning can really have a positive impact on children's later literacy and um, just their whole holistic development to be fair so sharing books and stories painting and drawing playing with numbers and letters getting out and about singing songs and rhymes setting up a play date as much as you can and going into and engaging in the library so parents were able to have these worksheet as well so the next slide please um, and now I'm going to talk about the ORIM framework, which Octavia showed you earlier, works uh, alongside the four strands of literacy. So ORIM stands for Opportunities, Recognition, Interaction and Modelling. So if you go to the next slide, this is where parents really 
it really highlighted to parents the importance of what they do and how they do it. So we really focused on opportunities that happen all of the time. So it's given the space and to have a go. So opportunities is the moment they wake up, when they're getting dressed, when they're when they're having their breakfast, when they're leaving, when they're going out on the high street, in the shops, on the bus. So it really, really highlighted that it doesn't have to be an additional thing to, to, to support your child's learning. It happens all around them. So that's the O for the opportunities. The next, um, the, the next letter is the R. And this was the recognition and value in the small steps and the encouragement. And again, there's some fabulous um, jigsaw puzzles that go along with this programme. And it really is focusing on what their child is doing. So it's really breaking down those small steps. So, you know, that whole thing of before they can sit up, they need to pull themselves up very slightly. Or, you know, if they are about to unscrew something, the, the whole mechanisms of what they have to do. So it's really valuing the small steps and encouraging them at where they're at. Um, the next letter is interaction. So the importance of just doing things together, not taking over their play, but just really being beside them, interacting with them, letting the child really lead the play, but then be beside them to encourage them and to, to support them along their way by scaffolding in, in their interaction. And then the last uh, letter is the M for modelling. And again, it's about a, children seeing adults doing things and doing things together being a good role model and doing things that children would want to copy so that whole encouragement of doing things together so that was that orange framework that works in partnership with the four strands of literacy so what did all this highlight to parents parents already realized they were doing everyday things that supported their child's early literacy literacy activities can happen anytime anywhere for all ages they, rec they really appreciated the Owen framework that reminded parents to really tune in and to focus on what their child is doing rather than what they're not doing yet. And parents really like the idea of focusing on the uniqueness of their child and not to feel pressured for their child to catch up. So the next slide. So we've got a few few bits of feedback. So I, I won't read it all out for you there, but that was just from a... Um, a little boy called Kingsley had speech and language delay and he loved the glasses um, and yeah so the mum there has said I've, I've enjoyed the whole experience just by attending an hour's workshop she got so much out of that and the next picture you've got another a little boy there he is he's playing with the scarf so if you go on to the next slide We've got another little boy, he's blowing some bubbles and he was just pop, pop, popping the bubbles. Another, again, he had speech and language delay and he was bouncing around with the bouncy ball and he enjoyed doing that as well. And we've got the next slide. This is a video actually, but I don't know if we're gonna hear the sound. So this is um, the little boy who you saw from the beginning who had his back and she said, just to say you made me realize that all the small things I do without realizing is definitely helping in his development and goes towards the bigger things he does. Each one is a stepping stone. So he really enjoyed the activity, the bag as well. So if we go to the next slide. So this is what the cornflower does. So this was a very brave lady. Not all of the parents were um, doing the, doing this but this one really had fun with the, the corn flour so next slide and so we then there was also practitioner workshops um and the aim of that was to really get parents practitioners to be aware of what they do to support parents um so to provide context for an overview of the project share information about the real approach to support increased confidence in understanding how real can support all families Next slide. Uh, so the the workshop for the pr practitioners who attended, the, we called from. They were community organisations. They were from the special school, specialist outreach staff. So there was quite a, a range of practitioners that attended the workshops. Next slide, please. Um, and the feedback from the practitioners as well is that they've given it's given us a real buzz with a common purpose. Many thanks for an excellent presentation with lots of inspiring ideas. And we're going to get together as a team to look at how we can adapt our practice. So a brilliant project. And I think overall the feedback was about how amazing that you can have low cost, no cost activities that can really support parents and in their learning. So that was the main outcomes. Oh, that's fantastic, Angela. Thank you so much. 
Um, it would be lovely if anybody's got any questions, any comments, any observations. We've got a couple of minutes. As I said at the beginning, we're now working in three other local authorities. So we're working at the moment in um, South Tyneside, Rochdale and Sefton to do another project along the same lines. And um, I'm sure we'll be working across many other areas over the next few years. But it'd be lovely to hear if anyone's questions, observations. How's, how, you know, when you said you're working in other local authorities, how are they being picked at the moment, please? Yeah, so basically um, what we did was the DfE, um, they kind of announced this with incredibly tight timescales. So we put it out to everyone who's kind of signed up to our newsletter, all of our networks, and it went out through the EY Send network publicity. Um, so basically, and I mean, in terms of our mailing list, I think we've got every single local authority in England, um, but that would be the head of early years who it would have gone to or a similar role. And then they expressed an interest and lots of people expressed an interest, but I had to allocate it on a first come first serve basis as long as they had the capacity. Um, so, yeah, it was all kind of done. It all had to be done within less than a week, basically. Um, but if you are interested in future opportunities, then I'm sure that um, if you just pass on your email to Charlotte or whoever you're in touch with for this event, then they can pass it over to me and I can make sure that, you know, you're um, on the list for anything that's coming up. And we've got, I can also send you a link to the part of our website that has details of the programme because we're going to be offering it as a paid for opportunity as well. So that if people want to buy into it, then that's also an option because we offer all our courses like that. I mean, hopefully the DfE will continue to fund it and then, you know, the opportunities will come up. But do stay in touch about it because there will be more to come, I'm sure. Yeah, because there's some elements I think that could be more easily or, or easily rolled, rolled out to wider local authorities, isn't it? Even if it wasn't the whole programme, there's some benefits to kind of parents and carers really, really quickly. Oh yeah, definitely. And we've got on the website, on our website, we've got some activity sheets that are there that you can just download and use in your area. And we've got some clips and things like that. So there are, you know, bits of it that people can just use um, free to access. So we'll send that through. But thank you for asking that. It's helpful. OK, anything else? OK, well, that was it was the opportunity to share that with you all thank you so much for coming and i think that charlotte's just gonna um explain what happens next yeah um thank you octavia and andrew that was pretty great um we are now going into a 10 minute break so please join your second workshop um at 3 50 um and you'll have the link in your calendar for your other team's invite so have a lovely rest of your afternoon